and good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're watching this is a good time. I am bringing you back to Artists and Their Pets, um, and today we are going to read about Paul Clay, who was a creative wit. All right, we didn't read about him as a kid, so this will be a good one. And also another one, I don't know much about their full timeline, you know? You learn these nuggets of information in your art history class, and uh, it's not always the full story. A unique and original Swiss-German artist, Paul Clay loved music, color, and cats. He said drawing was taking a line for a walk. <clears throat> Although born in Switzerland, Paul Clay, pronounced Clay, as I've been saying, <laughs> inherited his father's German citizenship. Also, I just want to take a moment and say, how are they going to tell me how to pronounce something now when there's been all these other words that I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. His dad was a music teacher and his mom a singer. Both Paul and his older sister, Mathilde, learned to play musical instrument. Clay began playing the violin when he was seven. He loved animals and grew up with pet cats carrying on when he was an adult. As a young child, Paul was taught to draw by his grandmother and his music teacher talked to him about music and art history. Sounds like he had a good, well-rounded um, art and music life. There he is, this kitty cat. He was an outstanding violinist, but he chose to become an artist rather than a musician. By then, the end of the 19th century, late 1800s, Creative ideas were especially encouraged in Munich, Germany. And in 1898, he enrolled in the Academy of Fine Arts, um, and there he had lessons with the artist and architect Franz von Stuck. Never heard of the man, but that's him. <laughs> Although Clay was good at drawing, he felt he did not understand the color and so could not paint. We know what he thought because from 1897 to 1918, he wrote his thoughts in diaries. But he finished his fine art degree in 1901 and traveled around Italy for six months with a friend, studying the great artists of the past. After returning from Italy to Bern, Switzerland, I've been there, he lived again with his parents for four years. Clay had met Lily Stumpf, a pianist, in 1899. They had much in common. Both loved music, art, and cats. They became engaged, but they did not announce it because Clay did not earn enough from his art, and Stump's father disapproved of the match, so he would not let them marry. By 1905, Clay was experimenting with all kinds of art techniques and starting to exhibit his works. He was trying to earn money through art, through violin playing, and writing concert and theater reviews. Oh, he's a little bit of a critic, too, huh? Hey, go see that show. It was great. That year, he stayed in Paris for two weeks with his friends. In his diary, dear diary, he wrote of his enthusiasm for the art show, uh, for the art he saw in Paris, especially the paintings of the Impressionists. Dear diary. The Impressionist colors astounded me. I'm just making that up. The Impressionist paintings with bright colors and small marks capturing the effects of light. Back in Switzerland, he discovered the art of one of my favorites, Edvard Munch and James Esner. His head was buzzing with ideas for creating art. Um, lost my place. In September 1906, Clay and Lily Stumpf married and settled in Munich. They started their married life with Lily giving piano lessons and Paul keeping house and painting. They held musical evenings for friends. In November 1907, their son Felix Paul was born. Clay shared his studio space with his pet cats, especially one beautiful white long-haired cat named Bimbo, who followed him everywhere. Aw, Bimbo. My mom always wanted a long white-haired cat. Let's think about that. But Clay was devoted to every cat that he had. One was named Tabby, 
One, excuse me, one tabby was named Fritzy. Then there was Bimbo and another cat named Bimbo too. Nice was a dark long hair cat. He had another long hair cat named Noogie and another tabby named Skunk. He had fun with his names. Let me show you the pictures of them. Fritz, Bimbo One, that reminds me of like Bimbo One and Bimbo Two, like on uh, The Simpsons, uh, um, Snowball, Snowball One, Snowball Two, and then Mies and Noogie, and then Skunk down there. <laughs> he never minded his cats walking across his wet paintings, as he said that in years to come, people would wonder how he created the effects. His cats inspired him, and he produced nearly 30 works with cats in them. Other animals, including dogs, fish, birds, and even camels, appear in lots of Clay's works of art. These are full of ideas about dreams, nature, and music. And there's one uh, there, which I've never seen that one. I guess I'm only familiar with his more typical stylized art, so that would be fun to look up. In 1907, Clay was inspired by the French post-impressionist, especially, another favorite, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, and another favorite, Vincent van Gogh. In 1910, he had his first solo exhibition around Switzerland. In 1911, he met the artists Wassily Kandinsky and Franz Marc, who formed Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Rider, a group that expressed emotions through paintings. The three artists shared a love of animals and music, and they became close friends. Clay's art was influenced by several new art movements. Expressionism, art about feelings. Cubism, pictures painted from several angles at once. And surrealism, art about subconscious thoughts and dreams. Clay's art was often lighthearted and childlike because he felt that children, like animals, were open and trustworthy. In Paris in 1912, he met Robert Delaney, an artist who put certain colors next to each other to make them appear brighter. Oh, color field studies. Uh, in, in 1914, Clay visited Tunisia. Excited by the quality of light there, he wrote, Color has taken possession of me. No longer do I have to chase after it. I know that it has a hold of me forever. Color and I are one. Rainbow. Ah. I feel like there needs to be a rainbow, so. Post-editing, I'm adding a rainbow. This is my rainbow. <sighs> he meant that he had discovered how to use color and so believed he could paint. And from then, he painted vibrant works in many styles. So if you remember to early on when he was studying at the university, at the Art Institute, he said he couldn't, he didn't understand color. He couldn't, like, hear it. It wasn't speaking to him the right way, so he had to go and learn and figure it out. And he did. He did. Before every painting session, Clay warmed up by playing his violin. He was outstanding at drawing, and his harmonious paintings also, also show his understanding of music and rhythm. Three months after Clay returned from Tunisia, World War I began. Two years later, as a German citizen, he was enlisted into the Army. His job was to paint aircraft. In 1918, Clay left the Army and returned home to Lillian Felix and their cats. He continued to paint and experiment, developing new printing and painting techniques. By this time, he had become well-known and was earning good money from his art. In 1919, an architect named, I know this name, named Walter Gropius started a new school in Germany called the Bauhaus. It taught students all the arts, including design and crafts, and how to produce their art and designs to earn money. Money, 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 money. It was, it was revolutionary, and Clay and his friend Kandinsky were among the first artists to teach there. Kandinsky's another good one. Clay instructed his students about composition, the overall arrangements, how everything is laid out, something here and there, da, 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 and about color. By now, he'd become an expert in scientific color theories, so he knew how to make colors look extra vibrant in paintings. 
One of his friends wrote in a book about Clay's love for animals, especially cats. Paul Clay adores cats, she wrote. And DeSalle, his cat, always looked out the window in the studio. I could see him perfectly from my private room, and Clay told me the cat looked at me insistently. Insistently. You can't have any secrets. My cat will tell me all. The cat, <coughs> excuse me, the cat on the windowsill was, of course, Bimbo, who also appears in Marina Albergini's book, expressively titled Il Gatto Cosmico de Paul Clay. Paul Clay's Cosmic Cat. I'm gonna look that book up. Many of Clay's paintings are made up of brightly colored shapes inspired by his spiritual beliefs. Some paintings are just colored squares, which one art historian called his magic squares. <laughs> With its many influences, Clay's work challenged traditional art. He often used his own made-up symbols and signs that he developed from letters, musical notes, or children's drawings. In many ways, his paintings are like cheery painted tunes. After visiting Egypt in 1928, his paintings became even more colorful and mystical. The year he painted Cat and Bird, one of several paintings that shows his love of cats, a cat's face with a bird painted on its forehead, it symbolizes what the cat is thinking. The bird is the cat's secret desire, <laughs> shown also by the heart-shaped nose. And I'll put a bigger image of that up. But that is it, the cat with the bird, its secret desire, and the heart-shaped nose. Clay died in 1940, having produced almost 10,000 works over his lifetime. 10,000, that's a lot. That is so much. So um, I don't know if this book tells us about Kandinsky. I'm not sure if he was a big animal person, but um, just thinking about like Kandinsky and Clay and their love of music and art, um, it's only natural for me to ask you to produce something that um, is inspired by the music you listen to. So listen to like your favorite song and close your eyes and whatever the images are that come to you, it could just be lines, it could be patterns or shapes, it could be an actual scene, um, maybe whatever that song conjures up, if there's words, it says words, draw what that scene is, draw what those shapes or patterns or lines are, or if it's just color splotches here and there, like when you close your eyes and kind of like squish and you just see kind of bursts of color. Maybe it's something like that, but following the rhythm of the music, so show me that rhythm in your art. Show me when it pops with the bass or when the lyrics come in, and how does that translate into your artwork? So you have some critical thinking to do. You've got to figure out how am I going to show that? So maybe you got to listen to the song a few times. Maybe you start a drawing and it doesn't work right and you have to throw it away or put it aside and come back to it later or start a new one. Okay, so what can you make? Music and art. Cosmic. That was a goofy smile. Tell me not to do that again. All right, tomorrow is Wednesday? And we're going to learn about a, uh, a, uh, an artist I know nothing about tomorrow. I've never even heard that name. Sue me. All right. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have a great day. See you when I see you.